Guys, this is you. Best the guy she told you not to worry about. All jokes aside though, this screen is freaking awesome. It looks so much better. It brings the car right up to date. This is the screen that we sell for the A4, S4, A5, S5, and the SQ5 and Q5. It runs an Android operating system. I'll link all the specs below. The link to buy the mod uh, module. The screen will be there as well. So we'll go through the whole install today. This thing is, you'll see how it works. I think it's so good. You've got the Android operating system. You've got the Audi MMI system that also works through the screen so you don't lose anything. I'm probably gonna put one in my car and I know we've already got another customer, Paul. He's gonna be keen to chuck one in his SQ5 as well. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. All right guys, so this is the kit. There's a few things in here. So we have mounting hardware. Okay, we've got the screen itself. There it is there, looking nice. That's the back. Okay, it's got 4G and SIM card capability. More mounting hardware right here. And then all the fun part. So we've got GPS antenna, Wi-Fi antenna, plug and play harness. We're gonna go through all of that as well. Then we've got, I think one of these, that will be power for like the hazard light switch. So that one of those panels that I showed you just before has a new hazard light switch. And um, USB inputs, we've got audio output extension. And that's pretty much it. So it's pretty straightforward. All right guys, so first thing we have to remove is the multimedia module. And we also need to remove this fascia here and the screen, this is all gonna come out. Um, and when removing this, it's a good idea to pop the gear selector out of the way so you don't scratch it. Okay, so we've got the radio keys right here. Just gonna go one left, one right, or one right, one left. And we can pop that straight out. There's gonna be a couple of plugs here and then the rest of the plugs will be behind the module. Once that's out, just set that to the side. You can remove the keys just on the side here, those little pins, you're just gonna press them in. Pull the key straight out. This one here is pretty straightforward. It's just clips all the way around. So we'll use plastic panel removal tools. Then there's just one plug on the hazard light there. Screen's got four screws, they're Torx 20 bits. After that, there's just two plugs on the screen there and just take your time with them. That's an LVDS cable and that's the power cable there. All right guys, just a quick look at how the screen's gonna work. So basically this little thing comes in the kit and that just goes into the factory position. Okay, so it bolts up right there like so. And we just use the four factory Torx 20 bits that we removed from the factory screen. And then this panel here goes over it like that and uses one, two, three, four screws to line up with these here. So that goes on, then that panel goes on and then the screen mounts directly to this panel. All right, so just at a quick glance, basically this quad lock connector plugs into this here. Nice and easy, right? And it goes one way. And then that goes into the original MMI module. There's two different audio inputs here, so you can look at that and I'll confirm which one to use and why. And then we've also got this little harness coming off, just the same as uh, in the CarPlay modules, right here. On this side of the car, where the glove box is on a right-hand drive car, there's a CAN bus junction. We need to plug and play that harness with that junction. So that means the glove box needs to get removed. And then what you're left with is this harness here. And so this is just gonna run up behind here to where the screen is. And I'll get the glove box out now, and then we can take a look at some of those connections. So once that's plugged in, you can grab this harness right here and run that behind the dash over to where my hand is right here. And I'll get you a look at where that plugs in. So next up we have this plug right here. That's gonna run up behind the dash up to where the factory screen was gonna go and we'll tape up all these plugs here and decide what we need. Once you've run your main power harness up to where the screen's gonna go, you will have some things here. We don't need to use any of these, but if you want to, you can. So what do we have here? You've got a reverse camera input. So if you wanted to add that, you can. You've got a secondary video input. So let your imagination run wild with that. Uh, you've got auxiliary inputs. And then there's also powers here, so if you're going to add an aftermarket camera, uh, you've got camera detection and camera 12 volt. This is one of the other harnesses that comes in the kit, so that's going to plug into the screen. And we've got an LVDS connection here, so that's going to connect to the factory LVDS cable right there. We've got the microphone input, so we can run a mic to it, LVDS. VCC and LVDS 5 volt. I don't think we need those, but if we do, we'll look at them. And then you've got two USBs. You can run them wherever you want. Uh, in this case, we're gonna run them into the glove box. Here we've got a Wi-Fi antenna. So what we're gonna do is stick that behind the screen. It's got double-sided on it. So you can get that up there nicely, tape it up, 
that will just plug into the new screen. Same with this here, GPS antenna. So plenty of room back here. We can stick it right there so it's nice and high on the dash. Uh, tape it up and then plug that into the new screen. Alright, so just a recap, we've done our quad lock connector, there's two audio inputs here, so what we'll do is plug the screen in and test it, decide which one we're going to use. There's a plug here called MOST, uh, I'm going to confirm if we need that, because I haven't found anything for that to plug into yet. We've run our CAN junction plug down here, I'll show you where that plugs in. And then we've got our main screen powers, we've done both GPS and Wi-Fi antenna. One of the last things is this cable right here, so that plugs into the factory hazard control button. Okay, and it gives you out the same harness and it also gives you a little plug for the new hazard button which is on that panel there so before you plug the mmi module back in make sure you fish out every single cable so you don't lose any and then when you're going back in it's important that this is out of the way and that this little noise filter is out of the way and fuse box okay so here's where the glove box was and right there you can see a red connector that's what you're going to remove you're going to plug it into this plug here and then you're going to plug in the male where the red one was okay it's just a t-harness so now i just want to do some basic testing so what we're going to do is just start plugging in a few things all right so just for a quick test you can see everything seems to be working pretty fine um, so what we'll do is we'll pull this out, start cleaning up the install, and we'll go from there. Okay, so like I said, there was a few plugs here that we saw that we didn't need. So for example, a microphone, you're not going to need because you just use the factory Audi Bluetooth. And there's a couple more plugs here, which in this scenario, in this car, they're not needed. However, in another model, they might be needed. And then in turn, there'd be other plugs in the kit or on the car side for you to plug them into. Um, but for, for this car, we just need to tape them up and get them out of the way. So when you're going back together, just take note of which one of these was your Wi-Fi antenna. So that's going to be our Wi-Fi. And which one's your GPS antenna. Because on the back of the screen, it's going to say GPS, Wi-Fi, or 4G. So you need to know what's what. Um, okay, so that's taped up, ready to go. I've just dummy fit this. So I'm going to pull it out, refit it all nicely. Start putting that back together. Start putting this back together. USBs to run down there just to go into the glove box like I said and then we can take a final look at the screen Okay, so that's pretty much ready to click back in uh, This was not very hard to put in considering all the stuff that we've now got behind it um, What I did was I just sort of fished the cables where I need them to go before Putting it in and as you can see now, it's ready to just clip all the way in. I won't do it just yet. I'll leave that for the end So what you also need to do is on this trim here, remove this black center piece and then that's the new one's shaped to fit right inside. So that will just be the last sort of trim piece that goes around. All right guys, so once that's screwed in and you've fished all your plugs through and you're ready to go, just test your hazard make sure that works this panel here gets separated from the original panel and what you have to do is get that silver trim ring off so it will sort of unclip from the original and place it behind this panel here it does sort of get held in by this uh, it doesn't click into this though so it sort of squashes in between um, but just to hold it better what I've done is put if you've got some high quality tape you can put tape all the way around it you can glue it if you want, but just think if you ever sell the car and you need to take this off, you're going to have glue all over it. So you're probably better off doing something like this. Um, so the tape will hold it, that will hold it, won't go anywhere, and you can remove it.
Okay, so basically how this part works here is there's two little feet. So the unit goes up, back, down. So that's held in place. And then the two screws just in there. All right, guys, there it is. That's the screen mounted. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, these two screws at the top can be hard to locate. So just take your time with it. And once you get them in, they're all good to go. And the two screws for it, all the screws for the whole system come in the kit. All right, guys, there's Apple CarPlay. So this was very easy. Just um, basically go into settings on the screen. Uh, you go into Bluetooth, sorry, not settings. You go into Bluetooth, pair your phone up. Once your phone's paired, wireless CarPlay will just work just like that. Um, and as we can see here, we have a very nice user interface. It's very fast. You've got the Audi logo. You've got the car there. Um, looks pretty cool. You can use the dial here to control the screen. I'm using the MMI controller right now. And yeah, that's pretty much how it looks. You don't need to use USBs for CarPlay. So you can run them into the Glovey anyway, but you don't need to. You can still tape up that plug there. And so I'll get that done and then we'll take a close look at the screen. All right guys, here it is. So obviously you've got touch screen. So if you want to go ahead and use, like I said before, Bluetooth, if you pair your Bluetooth, you'll get wireless CarPlay. Uh, music, you can store music on there. Settings, you can go through, change a whole bunch of settings. Video, so there's an SD card reader on that side. It takes a micro SD, which we've put in there. And so you can, you've got movies right there if you want, or music videos. Dashboard's pretty cool. That's gonna show you revs and speed. Um, doors open, obviously, doors are open. Okay, there's a few other things here which you probably won't use if you press car. This is gonna bring you back to the factory Audi system. You can use the MMI controller to use that. Uh, just note, source needs to be on AUX. So, then you can go. When you touch the screen, it will automatically bring you back to the Android system. And then you can go, so like here, we got apps. So these are the apps that it has standard. And then you can go settings, network, pair your hotspot to the Wi-Fi, and then go to the Play Store. You can download other apps if you want to. There's all sorts of things you can do. But that is pretty much it. Guys, that is the install done. Uh, it was a very straightforward install. It didn't have, didn't run into any problems at all. And as you see there, uh, the finish is really, really nice. If you have any questions about the install, just drop them in the comments below. Uh, like I said before, link for this exact screen is in the description below. And um, we sell it on the website. This is the screen that we're gonna use. I'm actually really happy with it. And I think I'm gonna put it in my Audi S4. Um, so I probably won't do another video on it, but next time you see the S4, it will have one of those screens probably. And that's pretty much it guys. Thank you so much for watching. Like I said, any questions, drop them in the comments below. I'll catch you guys in the next one.